let's take you down memory lane to the exact moment when um, um, he was announced uh, where he was appointed to take up the position as ACP. Where is their loyalty? Now, the Inspector General of Police shall be head of the police service, but shall be subject to the provision of the article and to the control and direction of the police council. Who is the police council? Headed by the vice president. Who is also a party member and a member of the government? What kind of advice do you expect from him? The third one, subject to the provision of the constitution, the power to appoint persons to hold or to act in an office in the police service shall vest in the president. Now, this is the composition of the police council in that. The vice president is a party man. It doesn't matter whether it's MPP or NDC. This is what we have given us, and this is what we work with. Now, a minister responsible for internal affairs, who is he? He's a party man. Then you have an inspector general of police appointed by the president. The president can dismiss him at any point in time, and therefore his loyalty is partial. It doesn't matter whether he was appointed by NPP or NBC. His loyalty is divided. Now, the attorney general is a party man. Then two other members appointed by the president. So the whole composition of the police council is the president. And it's the party. Why would you give us this and think that we should be professional? You cannot. There's no way you can have a professional police service. It is party politics. And that is why we have become a chess in the hands of the government. Whether it's MPP or NDC, we are chess in their hands. And they are playing political games with us. That is why no party in opposition can trust the police. Because of what you do with us. And so once you move into opposition, you are scared that the same thing you do with us, the other party will do with us. So there is a need for constitutional arrangements. And I propose that if we really want a long-term solution to this vigilante, one major thing. The IGP must be appointed for a fixed term of, with approval of parliament to exercise independent control. There's a need for an independent police service commission to replace the current police council. And grounds upon which an IGP can be removed should be spelled out so that the IGP's removal from office cannot be based on the whims and caprices of appointing authority. That the Minister of Interior can only give directives to the IGP in writing on matters of policy but not as to how the IGP must do his work. This will make the police loyal to the constitution instead of particular governments. All right, so that's ACP Benjamin Agojo. Well, he's a doctor as well. And what he has been saying, according to some people, and the narrative that has generated from that is one that calls for a national discourse as to the appointments of the leadership of the police service. Let's go to the phone lines now and speak to Richard Kumado. He's a fraud and security consultant. Thank you, uh, Rich, for joining us. Uh, what are your initial um, comments about the fact that a senior ranking police officer has been, well, interdicted or arrested for being part of an alleged coup that we are told of? Yeah, it looks a little bit confusing and it looks a little bit worrisome uh, to the extent that we are told the one point is part of coup plotters, then another point from government statement, they said they make some comments on a social media platform. I can only say that as service officers, uh, they have to be mindful of the code of ethics, that once you are in service and you are a bona fide property of the government, then you may not have the right to criticize government. But if that one is not clearly stated in their code of ethics, then I think we need to look at it again. But I clearly understood exactly the point was making there in that particular video you played. And so therefore, that is what goes for him. But Kofi Bwachi, who has the country in zero capacities up to this stage, to be saying that he's part of coup plotters because his name is found with people, I think might be doing more disservice to ourselves. I pray and hope that what they are saying about Kofi Bwachi is very true. If it is not true, Martin, the effect and impact on Kofi Bwachi and some other people and the lower ranks who have worked within the service, it's a big problem for them. Remember, Kofi Bwachi many years ago has been conspired against to be sacked out of the Ghana police service. He survived that one. And so this particular one, people might be raising issues. And therefore, it is supposed that government has more than what they are telling us. 
But if we are allowed to comment by the statement that came from government, it look a little bit worrisome and it look a little bit dicey, and we need to look at it again. Well, I mean, do you think that um, these arrests or interdictions or the fact that there's news about some instability when it comes to the security of the nation and the police service, that would heighten any kind of tension, you think? Yeah, we live in dangerous times. We live in times when crime and almost everything is against us in this country. We live in times when the West Africa coastline, we live in times when the whole world is experiencing some level of insecurity and unstability instability across it. We need to be doing things that bind us together, that promote cohesion and development and for national interest and not partisan. I believe that people who work within the police service and the security agencies, just like all of us have done, we hold in high esteem objectivity and pro uh, professionalism to ensure that our citizens are safe and secure and mothers and children will have safety working and going about their duties. But when we trigger the center and mm. the reasons for triggering those centers look a little bit frenzy and they look a little bit dicey with uncertainty, mm. you are creating problems for us as a nation and you are creating problems for the security agencies. And I think in this particular case, government must come more. Otherwise, it look a little bit some way and we will need to rise up and speak to that effect. And my final question to you, Mr. Kumado, will be the, 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 the points that were made in the video we just played. Uh, from uh, Mr. Gozo or Dr. Gozo. He's saying that the general appointment of the leadership of the police uh, board and the hierarchy by a president raises a lot of questions about their credibility and their allegiance or loyalty to the cause of being a police officer. And the fact that you have the vice president being the chair of the police council and that uh, the IGP is appointed by the, by the president and other key positions within the police service He's right, isn't he? That we need to start talking about some of Marcy, these things. you have followed me, and a lot of people have followed me. Secret Service follow me. All my of people follow me all the days of my life. But I have written several articles to that effect. Even on top of that particular dilemma and issue we have, the current structure the president is running, the security structure we are having, it is what is creating the problem. You saw what happened at Ayawato West Wagon when the president appointed two uh, ministers of national security. And it is creating confusion and a conflict of interest for the security coordinator who has been mandated by the Act 526, the intelligence and security are to be the head. And so, therefore, you are having coordination and collaboration issues. You have two director BNIs who have been stuck. You have an IGP who have been let to go. You have the tax advocacy issue we have not been resolved. You have all manner of things fighting us against this country. And it is based on the structure we have. It is not clear. And even from fraud point of view, you are having a dilemma where the president appoints the IGP, appoints the DPT, and appoints the CID boss. It's fascinating. And that level of inconsistency is creating undermining mm. and is creating problems within the Ghana police service. And it is an okay. issue all of us as Ghanaians must take our time, look at it soberly and reflect on it to be able to move forward productively but All not right. to be rocking the boat because somebody spoke about it. I disagree with that one, especially for a president and for a political party right. that are more democratic and they behave uh, all manner of things mm. that do not depict that one. I strongly condemn it because I could be picked up tomorrow for speaking on an issue which I strongly believe it is wrong. This Thank is you. Ghana and it is mother Ghana we have. Thank you very much, uh, Richard Kumado. He is a fraud and security um, uh, uh, consultant helping us uh, put it into perspective. But then certainly you can also join us on our various social media platforms. Let's talk about this, that the fact that the presidency has overall more or less uh, supervisory role over the police service. Will they be loyal to a president in power at a particular point in time or they will serve the nation as they should? Very debatable. Talk